Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AI Box. AI Box is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually will integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. There have recently been a number of very prominent venture capitalists and business leaders out of Europe who have signed an open letter. Um, and essentially, they're warning that overregulation of AI in EU laws is going to stifle their ability to compete on the world stage in AI. Now, this is very interesting because Europe is one of the com- uh, countries that has been taking a, a lot of really big initiatives into AI. They're currently working on drafting some AI regulation, and they're slated to, I think they've they've essentially created some proposals and some bills that they have, you know, sort of approved, but then they have to go and get essentially voted on and talked about by a number of different countries. And so I think it's going to be really interesting to see if that passes now. As that is kind of on the radar of a lot of different um, business professionals, there's a lot of different CEOs and VCs across Europe that have signed an open letter um, warning that this is actually going to be a little bit detrimental to their entire AI industry and their tech industry in, in general. So they had executives from over 150 businesses, including Germany's Siemens and France's Airbus. Um, And they essentially just highlighted the risk of regulation, saying that these rules could essentially threaten the ability of companies in Europe um, to compete in AI. And also the essentially they're saying the legislation that's currently getting looked at and um, people are trying to pass is failing to deal with other potential challenges that AI faces. So in this letter, um, they essentially are trying to offer the chance to rejoin the technical technological avant-garde um, and they're just worried that yeah they're essentially going to get stifled so among a lot of other different European industry leaders the letter also has a number of people that have signed it that are fairly prominent including blah blah car which if you've been to Europe is a very massive uh, company uh, Critero, Felix Capital, One Ragtime VC, YN Sect, Ely Partners, Minstrel, AI, Get Your Guide, Ventec, WeFox, Atomic VC, and La Figmila VC. So there's, uh, there's you know, 150 of these companies, but there's a lot of really prominent people. I mean, you have people from Airbus um, on here, and they're just, yeah, essentially they're just worried about this. So in the letter, this is what it says. It says, in our assessment, the draft legislation would jeopardize Europe's competitiveness and technological sovereignty without effectively tackling the challenges we are and will be facing. So the EU, you know, all of this comes on the back of the EU, which has spent almost 10 years essentially working on draft proposals of what is now the Artificial Intelligence Act. And they've been working on what will serve as essentially the basis for negotiations between a um, a, a number of different member states and the European Commission. Um, but this could also make the jurisdiction like aka Europe, one of the hardest places in the world for AI companies and platforms to actually operate. And so I think the demands or people asking for regulation has definitely increased a lot in the last, you know, number of months since ChatGPT launched. 
Um, and this has fueled fears among some European governments. So, you know, we, we see cases like Italy, which just outright banned chat GPT recently. I think they have brought it back. Um, but, you know, one of the things that they cited was just, you know, privacy and other issues. I think they were worried that Italian users' data was used to train chat GPT and, you know, they, they didn't want that to be the case. They wanted that data to be removed from the model. They had a bunch of different demands and, and stuff. So I think this is going to be really interesting because you have a, an area like the EU with so many different member states and all of them are trying to, they all are taking different approaches, right? So it's going to be interesting in the negotiations to see, you know, who um, is in favor of what. But at the end of the day, it's going to be AI companies and, you know, technological companies in general that are hurt the most by overregulating something that is very new. So included in the signatures, we also have the car maker Renault and Heineken, and they're arguing that the proposed laws might heavily regulate foundational AI models, regardless of their use case, which obviously is not the intended goal. So the the argue the letter essentially is arguing that um, compliance is going to cost, and the liability risks could be disproportionate, um, which is going to force companies and investors to leave the EU in order to take advantage of all of this new AI tech that's coming out. And it's going to create a critical productivity gap with the U.S., right? EU does not want to get stuck in second place behind uh, the United States when it comes to innovation and technology, as is, right? A lot of big companies are moving to America, moving to Silicon Valley to pursue, you know, they, they see a lot of tech talent and kind of a hub where they're trying to, uh, you know, grab talent to build these great companies. And so that's one thing that everywhere in the world is fighting but on top of that, if everywhere in the world is just outright banning uh, different AI use cases, um, all of the companies in not very regulated places are going to have major advantages. And, you know, the EU, of course, would like to avoid that. So they argue that um, the regulators need to create laws that are, you know, limited to. Well, essentially, they're saying that these laws are limited to rigid compliance rather than to broad principles on a risk based approach, meaning that Europe is going to be forced to essentially, quote unquote, stay on the sidelines in this whole new era of AI. And, you know, we're seeing um, we're seeing this AI come out of every single country. And so they definitely do not want to get left behind in this entire um, race to you know create these powerful AIs. So the companies essentially they're calling for the formation of an EU regulatory body, which is which has industry experts in it, right? They would like people that are actually into the industry and know what's going on um, that can monitor how laws are applied and also can, you know, give their own perspectives on technological things. Now, some people would say this is a conflict of interest. You know, we have the same issue here in the United States where um, essentially with, you know, drug administrations like the FDA, um, people want industry experts to be in the FDA, but then people are worried about conflict of interest that we have to kind of sort through with, you know, some a company like Pfizer or Johnson and Johnson is developing vaccines, and you know they're in there with in the meetings with the FDA on approving vaccines or their efficacy or a whole number of different problems. It gets it's very tricky to have industry experts, aka people high up in companies, getting regulated in at the same table with the regulators. It, it's difficult, right? And to make sure there's no conflicts of interest and the relationships there aren't you know compromised, and so. I think that's something that we're going to have to grapple with one way or another. Um, but at the same time, you don't want the opposite of that where regulators are just making all of these rules and they don't actually understand the underlying technology because they've never been in the actual industry. So neither of those situations are ones that I think a lot of people want. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how we kind of strike a balance in that regard. So I will say that this letter in particular has been criticized by Dragos. Tudorch, who is an MEP involved in drafting the laws, who said that, you know, obviously these larger companies, he, well, he's just saying that larger companies are being lobbied by an aggressive few. Um, he actually made a statement to TechCrunch um, and a spokesperson for the letter, who is Jeanette Zu Firstsprungberg of La Familia, said, in all its complexity, the upcoming AI revolution will significantly shape the future of every continent. We have long been discussing the lack of technological leadership in Europe, and now it is the time to take action. We have come to the conclusion that the AI Act, in its current form, has catastrophic consequences for European competitiveness. Sorry, that was a spokesperson for um, this actual letter that has been drafted by the business professionals. So they said, we are currently witnessing a lot of European talent give up leading positions at U.S. tech companies to develop 
European technology. The spirit of innovation is in jeopardy. So I think, um, you know, we have seen a lot of people that are interested in working for U.S. companies and a lot of people that are uh, coming from U.S. companies back to Europe because, you know, or wherever they're from because they want to build technology that helps um, their the ecosystem of where they're, they're, where they're from. So I totally understand that. And it does make it difficult, right? So if one of these people, let's say they leave um, Google's DeepMind AI project to go start a company in Europe. They want to like go and help their local area. And then all of a sudden Europe starts, um, you know, regulating what they're actually able to develop and create. That's going to really put pressure on them to just leave and go back to somewhere less regulated, which is the opposite of what, you know, Europe and any other country is trying to do at this time. So I think it's really important to obviously look at what um, regulation looks like in AI but it, I just think it's really important not to get uh, to jump the gun and overregulate such a such an industry that has such massive disruption potential um, before we really understand it fully and uh, really understand what it is capable of doing. Especially, you know, they're kind of accusing this um, of of being an industry or an area where people are looking at regulating it from a very practical perspective instead of an ideological perspective. And so there's definitely a difference and we're going to have to continue to look and follow up on how that is, continues to play into the future. I just released a bombshell investigative podcast piece about inflection AI and the dangers it poses to humanity. This is right on the back of inflection raising $1.3 billion and becoming the second most funded AI startup behind OpenAI. The episode is called Inflection AI Raises $1.5 Billion thinks ecology is more important than human life. If you haven't listened to this, I urge you to listen to this critical episode. I'll leave a link in the description to the podcast and a corresponding article with the full transcripts of my conversation with Inflection's Pi chatbot. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.